Good morning everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode. I'm up here nice and early to try and beat the heat because I know it's going to be absolutely hot today. I've got my hat. I'm all lathered up with sun cream but I'm not planning on staying up here long because it's just far too hot. There are however a few jobs to tick off the list. Now the other week we dug up all our potatoes and I've sown some carrots and some turnips but today I'll be planting out a couple of rows of Swiss chard. I also have some winter cabbage to plant out and some lettuce and I'll also be sowing some kohlrabi seeds as well. And then after that we'll have a little look around the allotment and see what flowers we can pick. So I've been busy down on the plot uh, during some of the evenings. I like to come up here in the evenings now because it's just far too hot in the day. Either evenings or really early in the morning. But I think the early mornings are starting to take a toll on me. Um, I like my sleep. But anyway, in this old potato bed so far I have sown two rows of carrots and two rows of turnips. The carrots are Autumn King and the turnips, I've done one row purple top milan and the other row is called snowball and that's because I ran out of seeds. But I also thought it'd be quite nice to mix up the varieties um, but there are room for three crops in here. So in this space, I was going to sow some Swiss chard and it's not too late to sow your Swiss chard but when we popped to a garden centre um, the other day to get some lettuce I noticed they had some Swiss chard seedlings for sale so I cheated and I bought a tray um, it would just mean that they're obviously be a little bit more established than when you just put the seeds in um, so they'll obviously grow quicker and you'll have Swiss chard to harvest a lot lot quicker than sowing the seeds but like I said you can still sow the Swiss chard seeds it's perfectly fine um, but if you can get your hands on a tray, then don't feel guilty about it because it's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, now, I have always and will always love Swiss chard. I think I, about, I think I talk about it quite a lot in these videos. Um, it's actually one of the first crops that I ever grew on my old plot. And it was just down to chance because I didn't know what it tasted like. I didn't know what it was going to grow like. Um, but because I got my old allotment quite late in the season, it was one of the only things that I could sow. Um, and yeah, I've never looked back. I absolutely love it. I recommend it for complete beginners or if you have been growing for years and years, it's still such an amazing crop to grow. I find it so easy. Um, it's so hardy. I mean, we had snow one year and um, it just... It was fine. Um, it kept on producing the next spring um, and we just had a crop all year round. Obviously it is um, cut and come again so you can take the leaves as you like, um, keep harvesting them, harvesting them throughout the year and um, yeah so so delicious. It's part of the spinach family so it's very very similar to spinach. I like to grow a variety called <laughs> bright lights which is a rainbow variety and you get this really bright stems in colours of pink, yellow and white um, and we actually have two rows of Swiss chard growing already. One has gone to seed, keeps going to seed, I don't know what is wrong with that one Swiss chard plant. I'm going to let that one go to seed so I've got some seed for next year. Um, but the rest we've been harvesting from, we like to make a Swiss chard quiche with them and we make quite a few and then freeze them as well. But you can add the leaves to omelettes and stir fries, you can have them small and tender in salads. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking about Swiss chard. <laughs> 
and get planting. Um, now there's quite a lot of seedlings in here, but all I'm going to do is space them eight inches apart. That will allow enough room for a nice mature plant. I don't tend to pick the leaves small to go in salads. I usually pick them when they're larger to um, use in things like stir fries and the quiche. So I'm just going to put these in at eight inches apart um, and yeah, hopefully enjoy a crop of Swiss chard throughout the whole year. It's also really, really good to sow Swiss chard from now because I do find that in the summer it does bolt quite a lot, um, like spinach. So it's not quite nice to sow it later on in the season. You don't have too much of that problem. I'm going to use a dibber just to put these in because they're quite small seedlings um, and it will just be a lot easier <laughs> than digging little holes. So yeah, put them in about eight inches apart. So the last thing you want to do is give them a really, really good water. And what I'm going to do with my Swiss chard, and I'll also do it with the other seedlings that I plant out today, is I am going to pop a green netted tunnel over the top of them. And that will not only protect them from the birds, but it will also give them a little bit of shade in this heat. next thing to do is to plant out the lettuce now i'm not a big fan of lettuce i don't really like salad i know it's a little bit strange um, but my dad and my mum and my family absolutely love it and what my dad has been doing is he's been successionally growing his lettuce so he put the first lot i think he put the first lot here back in may and then about three weeks later he planted out these Three weeks later he planted out these um, and now he managed to get some more in the shop so I'm going to put some here where the first lot were um, but it's worked out so well and I know in previous years he had quite a lot of his lettuce go into seed and bolting but not a single one has bolted this year so he is very very happy about that and quite proud about that um, and my I know my brother says that these are like the best lettuces in the world so um, that's a compliment and a half. <laughs> um, he has been growing a variety, um, the butterhead variety. Um, I'm not sure what this variety is. I know this isn't butterhead um, but yeah this is butterhead, this is called Barilla. So I'll be planting, I think, how many are in here? Two, four, six. I'll probably fit the seven in there. Again, probably plant them about a foot apart so they can get nice and big. And yeah, something else for my family to enjoy. I don't know why I don't like salad. Very, very strange. So I'm gonna put them here. Like I said, give them a good water. I'm gonna have to go home to get my dad's shed keys because all the tunnels are in his shed, um, but they definitely need a little bit of shade, especially as it's gonna get really, really, really hot today. I think it's gonna reach about 33 degrees Celsius. So hot, hot, hot. Let's get these lettuce in.
So this is where the Aaron Pilot and the Lady Crystal potatoes were. Again, they were a early crop, so we have harvested them all. They are at home, so we can just use them whenever we want. Um, but we wanted to get them out so we could make room for some more crops to go in. Um, and actually, well, they were getting a little bit large for salad potatoes anyway. Um, so again, when we were in the garden center, I found some winter cabbage. We are actually growing some winter cabbage. Under the netted cage there, we've got a row of kale, a row of um, January King, I think they are, and a row of the red cabbage as well. So we already have some winter cabbage nestled in there, but like we said, we don't like seeing empty soil on the plot, so we thought we would get another row um, to squeeze in here. And this is a variety called Tundra F1. I think it was the only variety there. Um, but we're going to put it in, see how it goes. Um, obviously, we're going to net it once it gets bigger. Um, and like I said, with the Swiss chard, I will pop a green netted tunnel over the top of the seedlings to protect them from the birds and the cabbage white, which are flying about all over the place. Um, but to also protect them from the sun, give them a little bit of shade while they're still quite young. Um, but they will need to stay netted. Um, and I think the same is going to be for the coal rabi. Um, now I've never grown this before, well actually I have grown it before, but it never grew, <laughs> um, so I've never tasted it before. Um, I tried growing a row over on the old plot, um, but yeah, they, they never really germinated, nothing really came um, of them, so I'm going to try again. So I'm going to put two rows in this side, um, and yeah, see how it goes. It does actually say that you can sow between March and July, so might be a little bit late but I'm um, fingers crossed we get quite a warm uh, September area um, and yeah hopefully hopefully I'll be able to taste my first homegrown kohlrabi um, I think quite a few people said that they've got a little bit of a nutty taste um, but yeah quite excited um, it says great on salads or use in place of turnips <laughs> I've actually just sown two rows of turnips but um the more the merrier anyway so yeah, this variety is called Purple Delicacy. Um, two rows here and then possibly I think just one row of the winter cabbage here. Um, but that will be this area filled. So I'm going to put the cabbage in in a minute, but they will be planted about um, 45 centimetres apart. So they're nice and simple. Um, but what I'll do is I'll sow the kohlrabi now. And they need to be sown about two centimetres deep um, about, and the rows need to be about 30 centimetres apart. So about a foot apart the rows need to be. Um, and like I said, I'm going to put two rows in here and hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to taste some kohlrabi this year. Fingers crossed anyway. Just going to use this old bit of bamboo to create a drill. I haven't got my plant line, so we'll see how straight these lines will be. Not that it matters too much about the straight lines, but um, as you probably know, me and my dad like a, uh, we like a good straight line. <laughs> also, it does make it, um, it makes it a lot easier to hoe as well because you can just hoe up the middle of the line then. Let's have a look at that. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Not too bad. So about two centimetres or three quarters of an inch deep, these little drills need to be. Then I'll just sprinkle the seed in, give them a good water, and hope for the best. <laughs>
Right, before I head home to get the shed keys for my dad's shed to get the green netting, let's walk around the allotment and see what flowers we can pick. So here, nestled behind my purple sprouting, which is in this net here, amongst all the nasturtiums that are trailing around there, I have these multi-headed sunflowers. Um, and I think, although I say this about every flower, I think, I think they're my favorite flower. I mean, you can't get any happier than a sunflower, can you? And what I like most about these smaller varieties, um, you get more per plant, um, and they're also the perfect size to cut and take home uh, to display in the kitchen, um, in a vase. They're just, they're the perfect size. Um, I was hoping that they were gonna grow a bit taller so they could be seen a bit more um, above the net but um, I'm so happy with them and I think this variety is called Soraya um, and like I said it's a multi-headed variety I mean this plant here I can see about 10 buds on it and I have already cut quite a few sunflowers from here um, over the past month um, and like I said they're just they're so happy so so happy um, and I will give you a little bit of an update on our giant sunflower competition between me, my dad, and my nephew. Um, we were very, very late sowing them, so they aren't anywhere near the height or anywhere near to blooming yet. Um, and mine is still quite small, so um, I will show you all them in a second. But I'm going to cut a few of these because quite a few of them are ready. I actually noticed a spider on one of these the other day and it was bright yellow so I don't know if it was some sort of sunflower spider um, but yeah it was beautiful even though I am quite scared of spiders <laughs> it was still beautiful I think I might cut these ones too because they are quite close to opening up and it will mean then that more should come as well so yeah I just love them so so much so this is another pathway to our allotment um, and another little entrance I do want to make it a bit prettier by maybe making a pallet picket fence to go along the back Put in a little gate there um, and maybe tidying the compost area as well and um, because this space here is my nephew's Dylan's um, so it'd be nice to have the little picket fence maybe like a little sign that says Dylan's garden obviously he hasn't had much time this year to focus on his raised bed because of COVID-19 and because of lockdown um, we've called this year a write-off <laughs> so um, hopefully next year we can really start work on this there were a couple of spare French beans which I put in the front there. He put some zinnias in and then he also chose these sunflowers. And um, there's a little bee on one of the flowers I've just picked so um, I'm just letting them have their fun. Um, but yeah, these are called Harlequin. Um, again, they are a multi-headed variety um, and they have a sort of red orange tinge to the petals which are absolutely beautiful i don't think he's seen these yet so um, it'll be quite a nice little surprise when he comes up to see them um these are the giant sunflowers as you can see not very giant i'm about six foot well i am six foot these are about four foot then um and i think my dad is a little bit taller than dylan's one my one on the other hand is about foot in height it's not very big at all and like I said I uh, well we sowed the seeds quite late in the season so I'm not sure how tall these are going to grow um, I can't remember the variety either but I know they're supposed to grow to about 11 foot and possibly more so yeah not quite sure how big they're going to grow 
Next year we are going to be more organised and start our sunflower growing competition a bit earlier. Because <laughs> yeah, it, it's very, very late. Um, but yeah, I think I spy some zinnias and some cosmos and some sweet peas to pick. So I'm going to pick them. Hopefully this little bee would have finished by then. And then, yeah, head home. It's getting far too hot now. Just a small handful of sweet peas today. Oh, gosh. I wish you could make something with these petals and capture the scent with it. I just love them. Um, but I think the sweet peas are nearly finished blooming now. Um, I have been managing to keep on top of picking them this year, which has been really, really good. Um, obviously, it's helped to keep them blooming throughout the season. I think that's down to us having a little bit more free time I mean we've been so busy with work online but we haven't been going to the garden shows so we've been able to come up here most weekends or in the evenings um, and just potter around which has been really really nice it also means that the allotment <laughs> is looking probably it's best that it's ever looked in all the years that we've had allotments <laughs> just because we've had the time so I don't know what it's going to be like next year um, it'll be quite interesting because obviously when you're away at the garden shows for like the weekend or the week um, you usually just rush up here to do a few jobs um, so yeah we're keeping on top of the weeds keeping on top of the picking and yes yeah, so far so good our plan of joining forces seems to have worked so I'm really really pleased with that but I think I was saying on my Instagram the other day about how it feels like the growing season is nearly at the end. I mean, I was picking my autumn fruit and raspberries the other week in July. Um, autumn fruit and raspberries in July. Oh, gosh, I mean, I'm usually picking them in September. Um, so that was a nice surprise anyway. It was a nice little allotment snack to have. Um, but I mean, we are into the first week of August now. And I do feel like the allotment is on its last legs <laughs> quite a lot of the crops are looking a little bit sorry for themselves like the gladioli they're starting to go over the ami majors are starting to go over even though i do quite like the ami majors when it loses its petals i really like that green foliage the calendula i've let go to seed um it was looking a bit sorry for itself so i thought i'd just let it go to seed then i can obviously pick the seed for next year um, and have more calendula next year um, and then obviously we, we um, harvested the potatoes, so we had that bare soil. So yeah, it just looked a little bit empty and a, and a little bit like it was on its last legs. But there are still things growing. And obviously we put in new crops. Um, we've still got French beans, we've got leeks, we've got runner beans, we've got the pumpkins and squash. So yeah, there are still things growing. I just feel like, I don't know. The year is just flying by, isn't it? And I don't know where it's going. <laughs> I seem to have blinked and it's August already. <laughs> Um, but anyway, the zinnias which I've picked, I've been picking these for the past couple of weeks now. I absolutely love this. Um, I can't remember the varieties, I will put them on the description down below anyway, but the coral one is particularly beautiful. 
Um, the only thing I'm finding with the zinnias is that the stems aren't really, 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 really long. Um, but they will go in a nice little vase along with the rest of the flowers I've picked today. And the cosmos are just coming into bloom as well. So I'm looking forward to armfuls of them over the next month. I love cosmos. Always grow it. It's so, so easy. So I've got my cosmos, got my zinnia, got my sweet peas, got my little sunflowers. I think that's it for the day. For the day. It is midday, hottest day, the hottest time of the day. Sorry, it probably is the hottest day as well. <laughs> um, I'm going to have a swig of cold water, pack up my stuff and cycle home. But I really, really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.